Factorio Tricks and Tips, volume number two, a vanilla edition. So non-modded vanilla edition version 0.17. So almost all of these tips exclusively apply to version 0.17 of Factorio. So if you're playing an earlier version, please disregard almost all of these tips. This video is brought to you by all those amazing supporters I have on Twitch. I actually recently broke the 500 follower mark, so I want to thank all of you guys for making that happen. And uh, that's who this video is dedicated to. So a little bit less sponsored, but more dedicated to uh, all my followers on Twitch. So thank you guys so very much for making that happen. And uh, yeah, so let's just get to the video. Factorio tip number one. Uh, version 17 can be set by going into your Steam's game library, like this, your library, right-clicking the Factorio game, going down to your properties, and then pulling this across here for a second, going to your betas, so it's gonna start you in general, going across to betas, and then switching your version of Factorio. Now most of these versions work, stable always works, but most of the time the experimental versions work. Sometimes they have a few technical issues, but they get patched pretty quickly. So you can switch whichever version you want to do, and then it's going to update and do your pause there. It's going to update queued, and then it's going to be paused, and then you download it and run the game. Pretty simple, simple as that. Um, right now I'm running version 17.23, I think, 17.21, I don't know, one of these versions, and uh, then you just go from there. So that's how to set version uh, experimental for Factorio. That simple. Tip number two is setting up your research queue. So in a new game, uh, in order to set up a research queue before you launch a rocket, you need to go to new game, go over to the advanced tab, and then do research queue availability, and then set it up to be always, never, or after the game is finished. So after the game is finished is after you launch a rocket, always is you can set up a research queue as soon as you get into the game. So you can start doing your red science, the next science is going all the way across. Um, and that is the research queue. So that's tip number Tip number three is a setting up a temporary train stop. So this is a heavily modded version of Factorio, but it works still the same in vanilla. So you click on your train, uh, and then when you're in the train screen, you have all your train tracks, and you can hold the control key, and you can actually bring the train to a temporary stop. So if I click control here, for example, the train is set to automatic right now, and it's gonna to drive to this temporary stop. There's actually no train station here. It's just gonna to drive to a temporary location, and then it will leave from there going back to wherever the heck it was supposed to go to. Uh, this is very, very useful when you have trains that have supplies on them, such as uh, landfill trains or trains with solar arrays on them, or even your artillery train. You can make your train move around like that. But one thing to remember is, this is going to immediately leave if it's left the default setting. So you can change it, make the train hang out there for a bit longer, or you can even add a weight condition to it, you know, empty cargo or something. But it's setting up a temporary stop without having to actually have a train station where the train is going. So now he's going to go to his temporary stop. That's all you need to do. So that is control clicking while in the train window. So you just hold control click and it even shows you the path it's going to take with that green highlight icon. And it uh, works in vanilla as well. So this is, again, a modded playthrough, but it does work in vanilla as well. So that is temporary train stations. That's all there is. The next tip is going to be smart cracking for your oil, is what I'm going to call it. So everyone, when they start playing the game, has run into the problem of they need more petroleum, and they don't need as much light oil and heavy oil, and you end up with massive amounts of heavy oil, nothing to do with it. And then you set up a cracking setup with your oil cracking. And then all of a sudden you have no heavy oil, but you needed the heavy oil to get some lubricant. And then it just doesn't work out at all because you have too much petroleum now, rinse, repeat. So what we set up now is called a smart cracking setup. So this setup is pretty simple. I just set this up for the simple purposes of this video is we have two refineries and they are just doing basic oil crack, oil refining. So we have our petroleum line, our light oil, and our heavy oil line. So our petroleum is going into the storage tanks, our light oil is going into the storage tank, and our heavy oil is going into the storage tank. We have our water imported from no one really knows where, from really, really far away. And that's the whole setup right there. So start off, very simple. Uh, petroleum into a tank, a, a little bit of a buffer. The light oil into a little bit of a buffer, and the heavy oil into a little bit of a buffer. Now's the 
smart purpose, the smart setup of this is what you do is you grab your tank and you put a pump next to the tank. So pump is going to be offloading the oil into your chemical plant to do the cracking. So simply is just set up as our light to petroleum cracking and down here is our heavy oil to light oil. Easy. If you need to add more, just add more. So we now have our storage tank and our pump and all you have to do is grab a wire and with your wire connect it to the storage tank like that. So now the moment you've done that is now you've made this into a circuit. That's all you have to do that easy. Now with the circuit, you are going to uh, enable condition and we'll say this is our light oil. We want our light oil to be the condition. So we want to see how much light oil we'll say uh, when you have 100,000 or 10,000 light oil, you will greater than or less than, uh, sorry, it's switched to 9,000, greater than or less than, you'll allow this pump to turn on. That's it. So if we were to look at this for the heavy oil, for example, the heavy oil is set to 6,000. So this pipe is completely dead bone dry until this hits over 6,000. The moment this hits over 6,000, the pump turns on. And we'll about to watch this in a second. There, it turned on. And then it puts into here, and then we get extra light oil. And then the light oil has the same thing. So when the light oil here is over 9,000, they are going to allow the light oil into here, and this will start cracking it. And then we connect it into here, and these guys will just keep working. So as long as the circuit condition is set the right way, greater than, less than, uh, greater than 9,000, we can switch it up. We'll switch it to 30 is a bit too much because that tank can't actually hold 30,000, so it'll never work. The tank holds maximum, how much does it actually hold? 25,000. So if we were to set it to um, 20,000, it's not going to allow any of the oil out until it hits over 10,000. So this is going to empty, this line here, and this pump will not work until we have 20,000 light oil. And then it will start cracking it, and then you will always have light oil. Well, you'll have light oil, and you won't crack excess amounts of light oil, and then you'll have as much petroleum as you can make. So we call that smart cracking. So you can use that to your advantage. And it's a very, very simple circuit setup. Uh, it's a circuit setup that I think everybody should use. Uh, and you can simply shift right click on one of them and shift left click on another one and copy it. And uh, once it's copied, but it has to be circuited first. So shift right click, shift left click, and then it's this one here. And you can just switch it to the different oils as you demand. So it's that easy. So you set one up, then you can copy the other one and rinse it repeat. And that's it. That's smart oil cracking. And that is very, very, very useful for cracking your oil. The next tip is splitters. So splitters in 16 got a overhaul, uh, allowing splitters to have a uh, filter priority setting on them. So now with splitters, you can do all sorts of weird witchcraft with them. Um, you can make it so it filters specific items going in and out and through, and you can also do input and output priority. Uh, how output priority works is say, for example, we have this belt here and we want this side to always get filled up first and the excess to go down this way. So what you would simply do is you do an output priority and then you change your side. So now if we were to take all the resources here, it's always going to give the resource on this side before the excess gets put this way which is really good for, say, a uh, steam generator or your uh, steam power. So steam will always get the coal, and the excess will go to your furnaces because you never want to run out of power. Um, and there's all sorts of different ways you can use this to your advantage. Um, and you can also do filter output product with it as well. So back in 15, you would have to use circuits to do all sorts of weird stuff with it. But now you can simply use splitters. The next feature is copy and paste. Copy and paste is uh, added in 17 again as well and it's as opposed to using blueprints. So back in the day if say I wanted to grab this and make a blueprint I'd have to make my blueprint and then I could paste my blueprint down but then I'd have the blueprint in my inventory. So I'd have all these blueprints everywhere but now you can actually do uh, control C. So I grab control C and I have this little icon that pops up. I can grab the building like this and I can just place it down like that. And now the bots will build that. And I don't have a blueprint in my inventory for that. And that works with anything. You can just control C and then place it down. And if you really like it, you can push B, go in your blueprints and place that into your blueprint book. 
So now you actually have a blueprint of it as well, if you so desired. There's also uh, Control X, which cuts it. I was going to cut the blueprint instead. So if you wanted to move it, say you built it a little bit onto the wrong area, you can use Control X for that. And Control Z is undo. So Control X would move it. And Control Z, we'll watch this in one second. Control Z, Control Z, I don't know. What do you want to say? Control Z, Control Z. We'll put it back right where it was. So that is Control C, Control X, and Control Z for cut, paste, and undo. Very, very neat feature. The next tip is trains can have multiple station names. So you can have a train station that has the same name. So this train station, for example, is called Min Water Stop Off. What does that mean? Mineral Water in C Block. Uh, but we also have the station right above it with the exact same name. So what's going to happen here is it's actually like a waiting station for the trains. Is They're going to pull up into the station and the first one available, the first train will pull up into the first one. And if this one's being used, then it'll pull up to the next station. This is actually a through station as well. So the train actually doesn't do anything at the station besides turn around. That's all the station is set here for. So the train pulls into it, turns around, and goes to its real station because we don't have a proper stacker for this. But you can actually use a through station for other example, other advantages as well. So this train actually has nothing to do here. So the train is going to go here, but it has no wait condition. So it is just going to simply go to this location and then leave immediately after. But, for example, if you really, really wanted to use this uh, stage, the through station, you could say put a station here and make sure that all the trains go to the station. But, as opposed to back in the day, the train used to have to stop at the station. If there is no, um, if the train has nothing to do at the station, it'll just go right through it. So if it has no wait station, or if it has no wait condition, it'll just drive right through the station. So you can now micromanage your train networks even better with through ways so say instead of the train going here we wanted it to actually go i don't know down over here you could put a station here with no condition and the train will simply hit that station first and then go to the next station so you can move trains around on the tracks how you want them and manipulate them in your own way based on where you're putting train stations so multiple names the train will choose the first available station which is really nice when you have um multiple areas where things are being filled up. So like tin ingot pickup, they'll pull up to the first available station. So they're waiting and they're still loading at the same time. And you can have multiple trains going to the same station at the same time. So multiple names, the same station, the train will choose the first available open station. Now the next tip is steel smelting. So steel smelting is uh, kind of annoying to do in vanilla. It's a heavy process and Nobody likes doing it, but the process is actually very simple. So to be racially correct with steel smelting, um, it's actually a one-to-one -one process. So you can grab a furnace here by simply pressing Q. I'm just gonna show you for example sake. We're gonna put a furnace right here and we're gonna grab our belt. And we're gonna reconnect this. So this is one of our older factories and you have a furnace here and this furnace here. Now, when you look at the furnace, if I push Alt for a second, it is, uh, if you check steel out, steel requires five iron plates and it takes 16 seconds of craft, but it actually will end up being a one-to-one -one ratio with itself. So by the time this is finished, it's going to have five again and we'll keep crafting. So you simply only need one furnace to one furnace. Now this works until you start beaconing it. Because this is making five to one, and then you're only getting one product at the end. So if you were to put productivity modules in all these and productivity in this, it's actually going to have way too much iron at the end. So the ratio changes when you beacon it, but for the initial setup, it's just a one to one from iron plates to steel. And you'll notice none of these are getting an excess amount of iron plates. They're just going to simply get five again and then craft one more. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Uh, it's quite simple.
That's all there is. The final tip is how to take a giant screenshot on your base. So everybody has always wanted to show off their base to their friends uh, because you make these beautiful bases and you just want everyone to know what it looks like. So in order to take a giant, giant screenshot, instead of linking together 100 screenshots, you can just do one simply a giant screenshot. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the squiggly or the grave or the button above tab, depending on whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you're going to open the command console here. But first, before you do this, you want to save your game because this will disable all achievements. And depending on how big your factory is and what's going on your computer, you might crash your game too. So just a heads up. So save your game first. Center your player on the middle of your base. You're going to open the command console using the grave or the back quote or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then you are going to type in this command. Uh, C a slash C a game to take screenshot resolution. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the link for that, the copy for that will be below. I'm actually physically pointing below, but we'll have that in the comments of the video. Uh, then once you click that, it's going to disable um, achievements. So you're going to get a warning sign. So you're going to click OK. And it will say duh, 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 duh. Uh, achievements will be disabled when you do that. Um, then don't save so you don't lose all your achievements. Then you're going to find your screenshot in your C shift slash users, U app data roaming factorio slash script output. Uh, the file is going to be huge. It's going to be like a 40 megabyte file. So you're going to want to open that using another program like Paint or something. And you are going to want to save it as a JPEG as opposed to PNG. That simple. So then you took a screenshot of your face, of your of your face, took a screenshot of your face, of your base, and you'll have a nice big screenshot to go show all your friends of your giant, giant factory. The next tip is renaming stations to use rich text. Uh, what that means is with rich text, you can actually put images now in your uh, setups. So uh, right now we have a station called Man in the Hat. That's just a default station name, I believe. Uh, and we can actually change it to man in the hat iron plate. Um, so simply to set that up, it's going to be um, whatever this bracket thing is called image equals iron equals item slash iron dash plate uh, and then closed bracket parentheses bracket, whatever the heck it's called. Um, you can find more information on rich text on the Factorio Wikipedia uh, wiki.factorio.com slash rich rich underscore text. Uh, there'll be a link to that below in the bottom, and uh, that works with any image type. So you can do iron plate, you can do stone, you can do copper, you can do uh, ammo, you can do any type of name like that. So you can add all sorts of station names just to differentiate your stations. Because eventually, when you have a lot of trains, uh, differentiating your stations uh, really helps. So the more stations you get, uh, the more you can work with that. So right now we have like a bazillion stations here. We... This factory is from 16, so it doesn't have uh, any rich text names, but you can use that uh, now in 17. So that is rich text in your factory for station names. You can also use that in uh, chat as well. So if you were chatting, you could also throw up an iron plate in chat by pushing the uh, squiggly button, which I know is not called a squiggly. It is called a, a grave, 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 something like that. Uh, so push your brackets, push image iron plate again, for example, and then close it. And now you have iron plate and say, hi. So now it says Yamakara, iron plate, hi. Rinse, repeat with different items. The final tip is to sometimes remember to take a break. There's a wonderful world outside and there's people just waiting to be talked to. No, I'm just kidding. The factory must grow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. And uh, until next we meet, this is Yamakara.